Your mind is the electricity flowing through that flesh. And you can alter it with magnets. So you can use a magnet and alter the electricity in our mind. I used to work in an Alzheimer's clinic when I was trying to get into medical school. And once in a while, these older folks, they would have dementia. Parts of the brains would literally wither, like the flesh would wither. It's not just the thinking and the electricity. Right. And hidden painting abilities would come out. And I'm not talking like they're going to be at, in, in a museum at some point, but a dramatic change in, their, in the way they wrote, in their ability to paint landscapes. And you see the before and after pictures. And those kind of things make me think there's a lot of untapped potential, that there's so much going on in the brain that we are not seeing on the daily level. Anything difficult where you have to think is good for your brain. The flesh in our skulls, it's meant to think and feel. It's a thinking machine, it's a thinking flesh that you actually have to use or to protect itself because it's an energy hog, right? It's three pounds but uses 20%. If you're not using parts of it, it'll program itself to let those parts of the garden wither. So the diversity of thinking and the depth of thinking just one level past what you're used to is the way to keep the whole garden flourishing. And it is a garden in there. There's chemicals, there are things moving, there are different types of brain cells. It's not just neurons. Thousands of years ago, one time, I said, was a fascinating thing I read. For headaches, they would take electric fish and just put, try to zap the skull with electric Whoa. fish. And that's modern electric, you know, shock therapy. That yeah. Your mind is the electricity flowing through that flesh. And you can alter it with magnets. So you can use a magnet and alter the electricity in our mind. Electromagnetic manipulation isn't just for brain enhancement. That the cancer cells that grew in the flesh of our brain are also electrically responsive and can be manipulated. It's that fascinating. It's an electrical... I always explain it like it's a... It's an ocean of electric jellyfish. The, the thoughts are not the jellyfish or the brain cell. It's the sparks happening in between. As you grow, the brain, uh, the way the, electric, the electricity flows, the way the connections are prioritized, is a bit like skiing down a mountain. It, it starts creating these electrical grooves of sort, where if you see something, you see a cliff, fear it goes down a certain path and every time you do that and you've reinforced it it actually becomes less expensive energy wise to follow and fall into that habit so these pathways these habits in our mind these rituals these things that uh, are good for us we want to hold on to those but a lot of them have become deeply carved you know routes down the mountain and filling those in Bearing them and finding healthier ones is going to be an energy expending process. Okay, the effort will be harder in the beginning, and then as you create a new route down the mountain, you can condition yourself to having more favorable and constructive responses. That's the best way I can explain is why effort will lead to change, and your most effort will be spent in the beginning, and then you can change your emotional and cognitive responses by conditioning yourself to find a different different route down the mountain. You can electrically break an uh, obsessive compulsive disorder habit. If we've seen patients come in. Interesting, so wait a yeah. second. So if I'm disrupting the electrical... Or is resetting it, changing the oscillations. When I grab a doorknob, I sometimes I think, oh, you know, I mean, I should wash my hands. But if I grab a doorknob and go wash my hands 80 times, the frontal lobe is having a hard time tamping down those emotional hubs. And we can drill a hole and put a catheter into these subcortical structures. They're like nodules within the, the web of, of neurons. And electrical tickling of that will snap the patient out of this obsessive compulsive disorder. Does Not it always. last? It lasts. Here. Deep brain stimulation. You'd love this topic. But uh, depression, OCD, and, and obesity, the drive to eat. It can all be modulated and they're all housed near each other. That speaks to uh, what they are, is, is an imbalance of the emotional drive with the ability for the frontal lobes to tamp down some of these instincts. It's instinctive to eat. Sometimes it can feel instinctive to be depressed and sometimes uh, obsessive compulsion is 
is a part of our brain and it's it's a natural part of our brain. It, it's okay to have those feelings. When you have them too much, the imbalance isn't just electrochemical and those emotional hubs. It's, a, it's the frontal lobes not accessing uh, their potential to tamp down some of the emotions. That thinking of creating new habits, uh, creating new values, uh, creating less triggers in your life, that's the opportunity that we all have. And I think that's the project you're working on. What's the stuff we can control without zapping ourselves and without putting pills in us? Those things set the boundaries, but the frontal lobe regulation of how we feel is in your own command. And you've seen it in Buddhist monks, you've seen the mind-body connection in deep divers. There's actually two nerves that come down and wrap around the heart. They can think down their pulse. They can think down how fast their heart beats. This is not like baloney. This is, you can put an ultrasound, we can, you can look it up online, you see videos of it. That shows that thinking can change thought can change how fast your heart beats why wouldn't we believe that thought can change those subcortical structures about anxiety and depression we can think about our lives and our habits and triggers and create effects inside us the mind body connection is is mind down to body and many people feel you know body back up to mind and that's where meditation and, and, and meditative breathing come in but those connections are real you see examples around you if your frontal lobe can only help you five percent and somebody else is all dialed in and helps them 50 percent doesn't matter that's your best and that's an avenue available to you by the way you breathe you can change the electricity in your mind we've seen that with the people we put grids on like we have actual measurements now but that's the you know what's the structure where you get the most out of repetition what is the perfect spot where uh, meditative breathing hits that sweet spot for people? And they'll increase it if it continues to benefit them. But the food, the breathing, sleep is a hard one, but to me, um, food, what we eat, and meditative breathing, I think are the most uh, graspable and measurable. Uh, the creativity stuff, the sleep stuff, uh, the exercise stuff is harder for people, uh, but the exercise stuff is, in its own way, the most important, if we can get back to that. Ooh, why? Keeps your brain arteries open, releases all these neurotrophic factors inside your brain. So not just the plumbing that irrigates the flesh of the brain. Uh, to keep the flesh, we're gonna get, you know, electricity is one thing. To keep the flesh healthy, uh, you have to irrigate it. And that has to do with your brain arteries. And since we already said it's not a it's not a ball, you know, it's these uh, you know these uh, jellyfish and they're moving and they're throbbing and they're pulsating and their tentacles are reaching out. There's a lot of space in between, and that extracellular space outside of the actual cells, outside of the neurons, outside of the jellyfish, if you will, it's not just water. There's chemicals floating around. Now, dopamine might be just from tentacle to tentacle, you know, serotonin might be this way. But what's, it, what's in all the stuff around all those billions and billions of neurons? They're growth factors and minerals and chemicals that the brain naturally has. But there's also a soup that these billions and billions of neurons are floating in. BDNF is a key component of that soup that helps regulate the health of each of those uh, jellyfish or neurons. And we can trigger more of that yeah. through exercise. Yeah, you exercise and it releases it, it showers itself. It's not like the thighs, thigh muscle sends it up to the brain. The brain says, hey, I'm feeling good, this is good, I like this. I'm gonna create a new rut. I'm gonna remind you, you feel good when you run. The brain will shower itself with growth factors. There are growth factors. The brain says, hey, you know, the electrochemical balance is better with those. So now we have the understanding that the brain is meant to think. The brain is also meant to command your body to move. And absolutely, the minute you don't use your left hand, the right parietal lobe with the motor strip says, I'm not gonna use much. I'll shave down that. I'll shave down that density of those brain cells a little bit. So that's where movement's important. So simple things like getting the mouse, you know, using the mouse with your left hand and using your phone with your left hand. It's a powerful technique. Brain training just means learning as a habit 
one step past where you're comfortable. If you're reading it, you know it, your brain's an, it's an idol. If it's too hard, it's not even engaged. It's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna win this race. I'm not gonna kick in at second gear. So just, just like video games, just good enough to get to the next level, right? They don't hit you with the fifth level, the tilt level up front. It's level one to level two, level two to level three. And that's what learning is. Let's talk about the mind diet. Yeah. I found that really interesting in the book. So this is not to lose weight. It's what nutrients to put inside you, where if you have a thousand people here and you have a thousand people here, and for 20 years they eat differently, what are the numbers of people with dementia? Mm -hmm. All of the things being equal. As I tell my kids, plants, mm -hmm. which is, you know, fruit or salad. It doesn't have to be just salad. You know, yogurt, nuts, lean meats like, you know, chicken and salmon. What the, is it that salmon has? Omega-3s. It's the only thing in our literature that we know is a, is a nutritional component in food that is good for brain health. And, you know, the brain is an extremely fatty organ. And so it needs to it needs to have those fats. So omega threes uh, are the only things nutritionally that I would say is you could supplement or actually add salmon in a couple times a week. Food will change the electricity, detectable, measurable det electricity in your brain. So that's proof that food changes mind because the mind is the electricity sparking through that flesh.